Hey everyone, it's Alexander, the real Mr. Robinson, and this is my review for The Call of the Wild, which is the latest adaptation of the Jack London book of the same name. And it's also the first movie to be released by the newly crescent 20th Century Studios, no longer 20th Century Fox. I'm not really sure how to feel about that. But anyway, all that aside, this movie follows a domesticated dog named Buck who is stolen from his home in California and is pretty much taken up to Alaska and sold to become a sled dog. And it's his duty along with other dogs to haul cargo from destination to destination. Soon he comes across an older man played by Harrison Ford and the two of them basically embark on a journey to try to find their place in the world. A simple plot when you get right down to it. And this movie doesn't really do anything to complicate that plot. Every time I've seen the trailer for this movie, I thought to myself, this actually could be very charming because it looks like it's a very earnest movie. It has a good sense of adventure. Harrison Ford seems to be doing a really good job. But there's just one thing about that trailer every time I watch it that just bugs the ever-loving crap out of me. I'll get back to that aspect a little later, but to cut right to the chase, I thought this movie was just fine. There's nothing really too special about it, and everything that you got from the trailer is pretty much what you get with this movie. It's very straightforward, nothing more and nothing less. It's a very charming movie, and it actually has a very old school vibe to it, in the sense that this is a movie that felt like it should have come out in the late 60s or early 70s, sort of like Old Yeller, except less of you know, that happening, which could be considered a strength of the movie and also a mark against it. The strength of this feeling like a movie that should have come out back then is that it's a very earnest movie. It's very straightforward and to the point, and there are a lot of very subtle moments to it. But that can also be a mark against it to where there's not really a whole lot of surprises. It's a very predictable type of movie. And for me personally, it doesn't leave you with the true sense of excitement and adventure that this movie wants to convey. In terms of the main character, Buck, he has a very strong personality. He's a very expressive dog. You can easily tell what this dog is thinking. And I also love that this movie doesn't try to give the dogs voiceovers in their heads or at worst, make them talk. So you get a sense of everything that Buck is thinking without there being one single line of dialogue to express how... Well, okay, you know what? There's no line of dialogue that comes from Buck internally, but there is a lot of narration going on in this movie done by Harrison Ford. Which, speaking of Harrison Ford, this is one of those other movies where he really showed up to work, he cared about what he was doing, and he does a really good job. However, I was actually pretty disappointed that he wasn't in the movie as long as I thought he would be. And really, when he and Buck go on this adventure, it's not until the halfway point of the movie. For the first half, Harrison Ford's character is pretty much a side character, and most of the focus is around this dog. And also, I'm just not a huge fan of the narration. And it's in those moments where we get some sort of dialogue that conveys what Buck is thinking, when I feel like the facial expressions of Buck say enough. In terms of the rest of the human characters, there's not really a whole lot to them. The one that stands out the most for me is probably Dan Stevens, who is a straight up cartoon character in the movie. And I feel like the only reason he's in the movie is for there to be some conflict because they make him more than Jai Courtney in Buffalo to be a straight up cartoon villain. And he does some absurdly evil stuff, things that no regular human being would even attempt to do just to get you to hate this guy. His character felt like an afterthought. And then there's the biggest problem I had with the movie. The one thing that I feared from the trailers and the one thing that keeps this movie from being great, the CGI. Why is this dog 100% CGI? Like, look, I get that this dog goes through a lot of scenarios that if you put a real dog in these situations, PETA would have a field day. Because the dog is pulling a sled, running through caverns, trying to dodge an avalanche. This dog's getting abused with a club, choked on by a collar. This dog goes through all kinds of hell. So for those moments, I get using a CGI dog. But even for the quieter moments, you couldn't find a real dog. And I know Buck is a bigger dog than normal. I mean, this is a big dog. But there was that technology in Lord of the Rings to make the hobbits and dwarves seem smaller than the rest of the characters. So they could have used that to make Buck feel a lot bigger. And also there's another technique of special effects called animatronics and puppets. 
given how advanced the technology is, you could have made a puppet or animatronic version of Buck and it would have been more convincing. I know a lot of people out there are making Han and Chewie jokes because Harrison Ford is with another furry creature. But if I were to bring up Star Wars, do you know why the relationship between Han and Chewbacca works so well? That's because Chewbacca is an actual costume. There's somebody actually playing this Wookiee, so you buy the dynamic because there's actually something physically there interacting with Harrison Ford. Outside of the motion capture actor, there's no real dog interacting with Harrison Ford, so all the emotional moments between Harrison Ford and Buck can only work if you are a huge dog lover. And I'm a big dog lover as well, but I want to be invested in their story. And because Buck is 100% CGI, I just didn't feel that emotion. And also the CGI is wobbly. The movements on Buck don't really feel that natural. And there are points where it's a flat out cartoon character straight out of an animated movie. And that's probably the biggest problem I had with the movie, the fake looking CGI, which is a crime for two reasons. One, this movie cost nearly $150 million, so with CGI as bad as this, I just want to know where did that money go? And also for the director of this movie, Chris Sanders, to have an animation background with Lilo and Stitch and How to Train Your Dragon, two movies that involve the relationship between a human and a pet, I thought this just would have been a much better movie. And don't get me wrong, as I said before, Buck is a very expressive character, but there were just a lot of points because of the mediocre to bad CGI where I didn't believe that dog was there. So, I mean, it's not a bad movie when you think about it. It is well made outside of the CGI. It's very earnest. It's straightforward to the point. And there are a lot of moments that actually were effective. But it's actually not that special of a movie when you think about it. Like I said before, this is something that should have been released back in the late 60s or early 70s. So I would say watch at your own risk. If you like the trailers, then I would recommend go see this movie because you'll like it. However, if you were bothered by the fact that Buck is a completely CGI character, then that's going to bug you throughout this entire movie. And if you can't get past the CGI, then I don't really recommend this movie altogether. So when I say watch your own risk, this is one of those scenarios where I say, Make your own judgment. And there you go. That's my review for The Call of the Wild. And now I want to know what you guys think about the movie. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, leave a comment, support my Patreon page, follow me on social media. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.